Hey, hey, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com, and man, do we have a treat for you, because today I am kicking off an exclusive set of lessons and interviews with the world-renowned guitarist Lou Paolo. Lou was Les Paul's rhythm guitar player for like almost 30 years. I had a chance recently to meet Lou Paolo in uh, New Jersey, and I'll tell you, probably the nicest guy you ever are gonna meet in your life. Just what, what, a, what a humble, nice man. And I'll tell you, man, the guy, <laughs> the guy is something. I, I don't know if I've ever seen guys who, uh, someone who can move through these incredible altered jazz chords so fast and so fluidly and be able to make so many substitutions. The, the guy is just a legend. Uh, he has shared the stage with just about every epic guitar player ever. I'm talking about, you know, besides being with the Les Paul Trio and playing with Les for almost 30 years, um, he shared the stage with and recorded with players like Keith Richards, Paul McCartney, Billy Gibbons, Slash, Steve Vai, George Benson, Steve Miller, Jose Feliciano, Jimmy Page, Tommy Emanuel, George Benson, Zach Wilde, Jeff Beck, Al Dimiola, B.B. King. I mean, it's, it's a who's who list of, of the greatest players, some of the greatest players of all times, and Lou has either recorded or shared the stage with them uh, throughout his career. He's known as the man of a million inversions because his chord knowledge is so extensive and his rhythm playing is so spot on. And I, I had a, a, an amazing opportunity when I was on the East Coast recently. I went to see him play at the Iridian Club, and that's the same club where Les Paul played every Monday night. Uh, up until he passed away in 2009. And uh, Lou Paolo continues to play Monday nights at the Iridian Club in New York City. If you ever get a chance, go to it. It's, it's fun and uh, a great time. And he does a lot of recording. They just, he just finished up doing a Thank You Less tribute record. Just incredible guitar players all signing on to pay tribute to Les and keep his legacy of music alive. And also he's he's just finished up the New Jersey Guitar Mafia record, which is another really interesting and fun project. And he'll tell you all that in a minute. So um, enjoy these, these little lessons and interviews with Lou. Keep on rocking. I'm David Taub, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. We'll see you soon. Check this out. <laughs> piano or keyboard, bass, they had a sax player and a drummer or something like that. So I took the place of a piano in a lot of, the, a lot of groups, so I had to play a lot of chord changes. So there's where I started learning a lot of changes. And then with Les Paul, uh, a lot of the changes, I kept using subs because I didn't like staying on one change. If you were to play what's written, ba -ba 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 -ba. They just bug me staying there. <laughs> so, no, no. All right, here's your G major chord, which of course you're repeating a few notes there. sixth and move it over here you have a G major seventh and if you can't make that stretch then play it like this and that's your G major seventh then you have the inside inversion which is your G major seventh like that and a G major sixth like that and we're just working here right on this third fret alone with the G so, in other words, if you have to play a G, and it says four bars, or four beats of G, instead of that, you could play the two inversions. 
it, it changes the sound. It's a, a much prettier sound, too. I'm playing it slow. Now, let's say your next chord is a D7. There's other ways to play D7, of course. Those two inversions we're going to use. So now, the substitute chord for the D7 and A minor 7th, right? Everybody knows that. Now, you could do it this way, too. Everybody knows the A minor seven. That would be a sub, so it'd be. Without using the sub, here's what it sounds like if you're gonna play it a simple way. Now with all those subs we just did, or the G major 7th, G major 6th, A minor 7th to D7. Now we'll make it smoother. When we go from the D7 to the G, let's put an augmented in there, which is right there. All right, now here we go. Minus seven to a D seven. Now do it fast again. To the G major seven. It makes it a little smoother. And there's another way we could do it too is by playing an A minor seven and playing a D nine flat nine to the G. Now I'll do it slow, two beats, two beats. And that's pretty too, so. All right, now we have the G, G, ma G major seventh, G major sixth, we have an A minor seventh, we have a D9, a D9 flat, and then the G major seventh. Now we're gonna move it up here. Now the way we play the A minor seventh, we're gonna go up two more frets up here. We're gonna use a B minor seventh to an E nine, and then flat the nine to the A minor seventh, to the D nine, to the flat nine. And now you'll see what that sounds like, it'll be One more time. Because you did it here before when I first told you about the D9 and then flat the 9. Now we're doing it from a B minor 7th. Listen to that B minor 7th and G major 7th. You can actually sub that. You can sub that B minor seventh sometimes for a G major seventh. So instead of playing the G major seventh first, I started with the B minor seventh. first uh, Iridium and one night uh, Tony Matola showed up, Bucky Pizzarelli, Al Caiola, Vinnie Bell and we got them all up on stage and we played a few numbers together and they took a picture of us and it said the New Jersey Guitar Mafia and from that day we were all known as the New Jersey Guitar Mafia and Ben Elliott from Showplace Studios decided, well, let's do uh, an Italian, so a lot of Italian songs with the New Jersey Guitar Mafia, and that's how we put that together. And um, we did a lot of Italian songs, and it came out beautiful. All right, 
Gary Maserati was the first uh, uh, bass player with Les Paul Trio at Fat Tuesdays for 12, for 12 years. Uh, and he's Italian and from New Jersey, and that's why we used him. Al Caiola, uh, a lot of people know him. He has been backing up Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet for the past 20 some odd years. He's also worked with Frank Sinatra, um, Perry Como. He's worked with all the big names and Johnny Mathis too. He did a lot of theme songs on TV. Can I name like Bonanza, yeah. um, The Magnificent Seven, the movie, that was him playing guitar. Then you have Bucky Pizzarelli who played uh, with like Dion on the Belmonts to Jerry Vale. And we have Frank Vignola, who does a lot of Django, and he is a whiz on the guitar. I mean, he's, his, his technique is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 